here's our passage for our series. We're in St. Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5. Husbands, love your wives as Christ also loved the church and delivered himself up for it, that he might sanctify it, cleansing it by water in the word of life, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Hi everyone, I'm Raylan Alamo and you're watching Citadel Catholic Media. So we are to sanctify our wives by the water of the word. This means we're supposed to try to get them to heaven. And you know with my type A personality, people will often presume that I'm harsh with my family. And so I'll joke around with my wife, Missy, sometimes, you know, when I'm being a thorn in her side, and I'll say, sure, baby, I'm trying to get you to heaven. You know, the church tells us that in order to get to heaven, we have to suffer, we have to take off our, up our cross. And I want you to be, have such a good seat in heaven, I want you to be so close to God that you'll be able to touch Padre Pio. You know, and hopefully I won't be in some uncomfortably warm place somewhere. Looking at my relationship with my wife, I want to preserve her body and soul. And the passage we just read literally says, without spot, wrinkle, or blemish. And you know, stress is not attractive on a person, especially on a lady. And I get a mite bit offended sometimes when we're out and about. We might meet up with somebody we hadn't seen for a while or somebody new. And we'll proudly say, we have seven children. And they'll look over at my wife and say, wow, you look great for having seven kids. Like as if she ought to be in a wheelchair after this kind of ordeal. But we have fallen so far away from the real understanding of what masculinity and femininity are really all about. God made a woman's body to give life, for her to have children. But instead, women will poison and mutilate their bodies so that they don't have children. And boy, I'd be drawn and quartered if I were to encounter a woman and say, well, you look okay for a career woman, but it is the unnatural roles that put the stress on our wives. Whenever they are taking care of our responsibilities, like providing for the family, or dealing with unruly teenagers, or managing finances, or managing the home, these are our responsibilities. So yes, I do take my responsibility as head of my family seriously. These souls of my wife and my children are in my charge as the souls of your wife and your children are in your charge. So without necessarily being harshly dictatorial, we can be straightforward and direct and lead responsibly. This means we have to root out any sin that's in our family, including that of our wives. We have to be able to rebuke them when they are in error. This is why we must know our faith so that we can correct them when necessary. So let's look at how Christ loved the church. Well, when he was here, dwelling on the earth in human form, he started the church. And who did he start with? He started with those twelve apostles. And when the next in line, St. Peter, got out of line and contradicted our Lord, Christ said, Get thee behind me, Satan. Now, maybe it's not so nice and pretty to love as Christ loved the church. Today, you'd be charged with mental anguish. But as far as I can see, the way Christ loved the church was with uncompromising leadership when it came to principle, what today we might call faith and morals. So when someone questioned or doubted him, did he say, oh, I'm sorry, did that offend you? No, he didn't. Or did he gather the 12 apostles around him and say, okay, how do y'all want to go about this redemption thing? No, he held to principle even when it cost him his life. Now, before anyone accuses me of advocating being a tyrant or a dictator, I have not and I do not. But what I am advocating is that we hold the principle. And that principle is that the father is the head of the home. And that he calls the shots and he wears the pants. And he doesn't capitulate just out of a little pressure or because he sees a little disappointment. The common response is leadership is service. Let me be very clear on what this means. It means that we call the shots unselfishly considering everyone involved and what is the best interest for everyone. This means we'll have to be observant, and we'll have to have some discussions, and we'll have to ask some questions. And then after considering all this, 
We call the shots. It doesn't mean following all the orders of our wife. This has never been the teaching of the church. And as far as leadership in the home, the rubber really meets the road whenever the children become teenagers and start exerting their independence. This is where the foundation of the father as the respected leader of the home really kicks in. So we're going to talk about this next time on Husbands Love Your Wives, the father as a disciplinarian of the family here at Citadel Catholic Media. Come back and see us. God bless you. And those of your wife and your children are also in your charge. And I forgot the next line. Oh my gracious. <laughs> oh, I would not want to be watching this. <laughs> I'm turning red. <laughs> wow. That was a Father Karapi shot. <laughs>